Hey everyone, uh, welcome to a new whiteboard episode. Today we're with Xiao Hong from Meter. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll discuss how their platform works. Um, do you want to start by introducing yourself and the project? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi everyone, my name is uh, Xiao Han Zhu. Um, I actually have an engineering background uh, like for a while, and then I moved uh, to like investment and finance. So, I used to run a VC fund. Uh, uh, called ZMT Capital, we invest uh, in cryptos and blockchains. That's uh, back in 2016, that's how I got into the space. And then while we're investing in these projects, we've been just thinking like, uh, what's the valuation? How do we value these uh, cryptocurrencies? What are the uh, fundamental use cases? So that's where we realized that uh, we need to s create a different type of infrastructure to really uh, empower decentralized uh, businesses. So that's how we started uh, Meter. So basically on a high level, Meter, the goal of the Meter, uh, of the Meter project is to create uh, uh, Alibaba on Web3. What it means is that we want to basically standardize interconnect values and then settle them on blockchains uh, quickly. So fundamentally we do three things. One is that we create uh, a universal unit account that's native uh, for crypto, not uh, linked to any fiat currencies, but fundamentally it's economically stable in value. Uh, secondly, we um, basically redesign the uh, consensus and uh, the game inside the, uh, the economic game inside cryptocurrencies to create a, a faster uh, consensus approach. And finally, uh, we support uh, intercommunication with uh, existing um, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and also in the future, other blockchains like NIR, for example, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, that's a high level overview. All right, let's uh, dive more how exactly it works. Yeah, sure. So maybe let's uh, start with the, uh, the stable unit of account. Sure. Yeah. So basically, um, if you look at uh, all the cryptocurrency today, for example, like uh, Bitcoin, well, when Bitcoin was designed, I think uh, Satoshi, in one of the, his uh, like uh, email threads, he commented on that basically he wasn't sure how to design the uh, the monetary policy to be like uh, like uh, to be like basically uncheatable. So that's why like uh, he put in like the twenty one million hard cap in there, which made uh, Bitcoin an excellent uh, vehicle for investment because of the uh, limit supply, the rigid supply. But uh, for any economy, um, when the system grows, um, you run into a deflationary issue. And uh, in a deflationary economy, it actually discourages uh, production and uh, investment. So let's say uh, if I'm uh, like a baker, so like today I, for example, purchase a flour, purchase a sugar, uh, with some currencies, I want to make cake, make uh, make a cake, uh, several cakes, and sell them tomorrow to exchange for more currencies. But uh, in a deflationary economy, it is possible that uh, the next day when you sell it, because it takes time for you to create the ba uh, create the cake, the uh, the currency itself already rise in value, and the amount of currency you can exchange for is even less than the ingredients you 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 pay. So, which make it doesn't make sense for people to do any long-term investment or production. Oh yeah, you cannot take a loan to yeah. buy those ingredients if so you cannot. It's better to it. just like hold your currency, just yeah. uh, sleep, <laughs> hodl, <laughs> hodling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So basically, that's uh, and also basically, if you look at any financial assets on uh, Ethereum, for example, um, because of this issue, over the long run, uh, you will see your financial products or like financial uh, assets drop in value in terms of Ethereum. So when the buyers see these uh, kind of uh, issues, why would they hold your financial products, right? I mean, why not just hold the, uh, the platform currency? So in that case, you are essentially competing with your own ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's a thing we would like to change. But uh, in order to create something like that, we need to, um, basically create a, like a model that uh, uh, fundamentally uh, link the uh, cryptocurrency 
uh, creation with uh, physical values uh, in the physical world. So basically, you can imagine like uh, we have uh, two worlds, right? So we have the physical world, and uh, we have the, uh, the crypto world. So basically, physical world export uh, like computing mm -hmm. and uh, electricity to the uh, crypto world. And the crypto world export uh, financial products, basically cryptocurrencies. Well, yeah. I mean, it doesn't export yeah. crypto. So right? It exchanges like value. Yeah. Interacting between two economies. And there's a, a very famous uh, theorem in uh, international finance called the impossible trinity. Basically, like, there's a fixed exchange rate. Mm -hmm. There's a free flow of capital. And there's uh, independent monetary policy. Basically, these three things cannot coexist at the same time. So, for example, um, there are like a couple of uh, like people. I mean, projects creating stable coins, right? Mm -hmm. So, like I think uh, the makers, yeah. Yeah, basically, like. Uh, uh, Matt Stable, like uh, ha Hasib, right? Mm -hmm. He had uh, like a pretty famous uh, article that categorized the uh, stable coins into three categories. Uh, three, three categories. There's a basic, uh, there's a crypto bag, there's a fiat bag, mm -hmm. and there's another one you probably call it growth bag. Basically, this is an algorithm based. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stable points. So basically, we feel there are centralization issues in all of these approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, um, first, for all the growth backed, uh, like uh, cryptocurrency, I mean, like uh, stable coins, we don't feel any of them are valid so far. So we can ignore this case. <laughs> and uh, basically, for the other two approaches, like fiat. Uh, Bank. It is, yeah, it's, some it's, bank, somebody sits on the bank, yeah. yeah. Someone had to sit on the bank. For the crypto bank, uh, they're actually, although they, they seem to be like decentralized, but there is a centralized oracle in there. And uh, the oracle is actually one of the single point of failure in the system. So there's a project uh, called uh, Synex, right? So just uh, like last week, because one of the round data feeds uh, in mm -hmm. their oracle, they created uh, like 37 million synthetic <laughs> Ethereum, mm -hmm. which translates to like $7 billion mm -hmm. in like uh, paper value. Mm -hmm. So you can see like uh, if you build a financial system on top of like a certain data feed, um, there's a could potential risk yeah. in the system. And uh, although your, like for example, even your Oracle system is designed uh, very strong, very robust, mm -hmm. but still the data feed itself, there may be centralization issues and also maybe like failure issues as well. Do, do you think it's possible to build, for specifically price feeds, mm -hmm. to build a decentralized oracle? Like, or like game theoretically balanced oracle? Um, it's, it's difficult because the, uh, the, incense, the incentive doesn't match. So for example, like uh, the asset running on the platform may be like in hundreds of millions or like billions, <laughs> but the incentive typically provides in the like oracle system Think about like a, an Oracle system's uh, market cap, right? Yeah. So it may be like very disproportional to the value it carries on the yeah. on the system, and also like because the data feed has to be like on all the time in order for the system to function properly. So that's a very challenging problem because, mm -hmm. for example, none of the software we can guarantee 100% uh, like availability reliability, right? Even the software is reliable, the hardware may have issues. So if a public chain run into this issue, I mean maybe it will just stop, like processing transaction for a couple of hours or something. But if a data feed is wrong, like it could potentially yeah. collapse the entire system. So fundamentally, uh, we feel um, this type of approach is more like an enterprise software level security, mm -hmm. not uh, store value levels of security. 
But let's talk about like the store value level of security, how this can be done, right? So basically, we just now we mentioned the, the impossible trinity. Basically, based on this, in order to have a fixed exchange with a fiat currency, mm -hmm. there's only two ways to do it. One is the uh, you have the Chinese approach. You do not allow free flow of capital, <laughs> so which no one likes, right? <laughs> or you have the uh, Hong Kong approach. Basically, they have 100% reserve mm -hmm. in the fiat currency they pack to in a single pool, mm -hmm. managed by like uh, an right organization. Bank, yeah. yeah. So, and they give up their own monetary policy. Mm -hmm. So in that case, they can keep the pack. But uh, fundamentally, like uh, these are all like centralized approach, right? So how do we solve this in a decentralized environment? So the approach a meter is taking is. Uh, Instead of trying to pack with uh, f any fiat currency, we give up on this edge mm -hmm. and uh, take the other two edges. So basically, we are trying to create a, basically essentially a new currency that's native in the crypto world. Mm -hmm. But uh, fundamentally, it's impossible it's to cheat and econo economically it's stable. Mm -hmm. So how it works is basically, um, just now we talk about this uh, two worlds, right? If you look at the two worlds, the only link between them is the uh, computing and the electricity, which is uh, in the proof of work uh, world, means uh, proof of work mining. So if you look at the economics for the miners, mm -hmm. so basically they have the, uh, the block reward. They have the transaction fees. Mm -hmm. So all of these are virtual. And uh, on the call side, they have capex and OPEX. So in a highly competitive environment like uh, proof of work mining, at the end of the day, only OPEX matters. Yeah, yeah, capital. So basically, capital. that's a uh, electricity cost, essentially. Mm -hmm. So for them, basically, um, oh, like right. you can see, like all the Bitcoin miners always chasing the lowest electricity price. Uh, and lowest taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> yeah. Basically, to lower their OPEX, yeah, yeah. essentially. So, um, what we do differently from Bitcoin is uh, Bitcoin because uh, the supply is set uh, fixed. Mm -hmm. So the only response uh, Bitcoin can have to the uh, to the supply and demand is basically the price. Like basically, the price changes based on supply and demand. So for what we are doing is uh, we have a fixed production costs in the system. Mm -hmm. So in order to create uh, one meter, so the cost of production for proof of work mining is always around uh, 10 kilowatt hour of electricity. Mm -hmm. So basically, when we set uh, like a fixed production cost, the response is essentially the quantity of the, uh, of the token. So the higher the hash power, the more block yeah, rewards exactly, you get. Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, for, from the miner's perspective, they will only create the coin mm -hmm. when it economically makes sense for them, mm -hmm. which means uh, there's enough margin for them to do the proof of work mining. Mm -hmm. And that profit chasing behavior will naturally create a feedback to the system, essentially creates a disciplined uh, monetary policy in the system. So basically, like over the long run, mm -hmm. it will settle at uh, like, uh, basically uh, essentially packed to the, uh, Competitive price of electricity. Yeah, yeah, and we actually have data, like showing this. Basically, if you look at the uh, competitive price of electricity, um, so we, I mean, we have data like this. Mm -hmm. So this is from uh, 1960s. Let's say this is 2017. So basically, this is the uh, measure by U.S. dollar, and this line is basically the real price, which means adjusted for, for inflation. Mm -hmm. So basically, over this period, the like, price was uh, the relatively stable. The purchasing power of electricity is actually more stable than any fiat currencies in the world. It, this is stable across the world. Basically, this is competitive price of electricity, like the, the like global the competition. The cheapest, the cheapest yeah. price, and yeah. And actually, if you look at the electricity pro uh, price across the globe. Uh, actually, U.S. is one of the lowest uh, right. country in the world. Yeah. So that's on a high level how we create that uh, like unit of account. But once you do this, 
uh, that involves uh, some changes in the consensus. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you design the economics and games uh, like this, the hashing power in the system is no longer going to be stable. Yeah. So there, you cannot uh, like uh, protect the system uh, just through the hashing power itself. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's what we do in our consensus uh, innovation. Yeah. So yeah. before we go to consensus, just for me to understand, yeah. right? So let's say you have you said ten kilowatt, right? Yeah. Is one meter. Um, and uh, we planning to use uh, like a uh, Bitcoin's uh, mining algorithm mm -hmm. when we launch. So it's like pretty clear, yeah. like no, known, very, yeah, known, very, no, known yeah. electricity to. And to there's always power. the opportunity cost for the miners. So even you got free free electricity, you always have to look at whether I should mine Bitcoin or mine meter. Mm -hmm. And well, you will only do it uh, when it economically makes sense to you. So, but l let's just let's just uh, mm -hmm. discuss an edge case, right? Yeah. Let's say the price of meter goes below uh, competitive price of ten kilowatt, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So let's say this this is right now. So actually, uh, the way to look at it is uh, um, because uh, there need to be enough margin for the Bitcoin yes. miners. So the price where it settles at, we believe, is going to be a one to two dollar range. For this, uh, for this, because even for example, like it's six cents, mm -hmm. like for the uh, competitive electricity yeah. price, uh, which translates to sixty cents, right? But uh, for a normal like uh, operation, for there is to be enough uh, margins for the uh, miners, mm -hmm. you will see the price settles between one to two dollar. Just because like they want the margin. On yeah. Top. Otherwise, they they won't yeah. be uh, sustainable. So. But yeah, just for me to understand. So let's say price of meter goes below for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, how does it recover, well, right? Yeah. How does it recover? Uh, we have dollars? another. We have another economy design okay. to basically consistently, like uh, removing currency from circulation. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right Which well. are related to the consensus okay. and token models. Then let's go to the consensus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, like. Uh, if you look at all the existing cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. you notice one interesting thing: like people are mixing currency creation with uh, record keeping. Mm -hmm. So, which is uh, perfect uh, when like Satoshi designed this, because mm -hmm. when you first design like a game like this, you need to make it simple, and uh, you need to have like involved party as little as, as possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, when the system got mature, you notice this is actually completely two different consensus. I mean, the record keeping and currency creation. Basically, record keeping, um, what you're trying to provide, uh, prevent, is the double spending part. So that is actually directly observable to all the participants in the network. Mm -hmm. You just need to make sure the information are thoroughly propagated. Um, so that doesn't require a lot of energy. But there's another consensus, which is the economic consensus. Mm -hmm. That's how much the newly created uh, coins are worth how much new value has been added to the system. That is implicit. And obviously, that requires a lot more energy to reach that consensus. So basically, in a proof of work system, it's the miners that are uh, reaching that consensus. But in a proof of stake system, there's actually people only care about the first uh, record keeping consensus. There's not much consensus like um, the, uh, the economic part. So typically, like people will just say, like, we have a like certain inflation rate, mm -hmm. and if you participate in staking, you will not be diluted. If you don't, then you will be get diluted in the system, right? So that's a that's a proof of stake. So in meter, basically, uh, we separate out the two consensus explicitly. Mm -hmm. So we use a proof of work for currency creation, for notion of time, and uh, one of the sources uh, for randomness, and the uh, Record keeping is done by uh, basically proof of stake. And uh, we have two tokens as well. The uh, proof of stake token, um, we call it governance token. So basically, you have to stake that to participate uh, in, the, uh, in the proof of stake uh, uh, record keeping process. So in our system, we have a, like a, a, a hybrid chain approach. So
So this is, a, let's say, this is a proof of stake chain. Mm -hmm. So actually, all the transaction records are kept uh, here. And then we have a, like a proof of work chain. So you kind of checkpoint the proof of stake chain. Yeah, exactly. Basically, here, the, uh, for example, on the proof of stake side, this is uh, three to five seconds mm -hmm. per block. Here, this is uh, like one minute on average. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, periodically, uh, these uh, keyframes, this is one epoch, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, they will merge with each other mm -hmm. and cross-reference each other, put the Merkle rows on each other. But basically, all the proof of work uh, chain, there's no transaction record on there. There's just basically like uh, solutions for the puzzle and the difficulty. Mm -hmm. Like uh, basically, you calculate a bunch of uh, solutions to the puzzle, and at the end of the epoch, you submit it to the proof of stake side uh, competitively, mm -hmm. uh, basically trying to claim the, the rewards for this chain. And basically, proof of stake side uh, will look at which chain is longer. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have a certain threshold. Let's say uh, each epoch target is like 60 minutes, right? So let's say 60 minutes. And each uh, proof of work uh, block on average is one minute. So whenever it's uh, greater than 60, like uh, here, the uh, proof of stake side uh, knows this epoch is finishing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to like basically change to the next epoch. So at this stage, basically, like uh, all the proof of stake uh, validators will look at uh, which chain is longer and vote for the longest chain, mm -hmm. and use the nonce on the longest chain as one of the seed for selecting the uh, the next, the next validators. Yeah, I yeah. See. So basically, on the on the proof of stake side, uh, we run uh, hot stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a uh, we're targeting to have a uh, like a. Uh, probably like more than 50 to about 100 validators mm -hmm. in the committee. And the pool can be much bigger because we can randomly pick from the, uh, from the pool for the uh, committee. Yeah. So, but like in theory, you can have like a, you know, yeah, a fork here. A lot of forks, for example. Yeah. But and whoever is the longest will win the race. Whoever will, like, but how, like this is pretty fast, right? So yeah, this may not propagate in time, even if I have the longest fork. Yeah, so whoever gets the uh, approval on the proof of stake side, mm -hmm. basically the proposer on the proof of stake side will just say, hey, this is the longest chain I, s I see. Mm -hmm. Do you guys agree? And uh, if I got uh, more than two thirds uh, people voting on this is the longest chain they see, mm -hmm. then basically this chain is, is chosen. I see. And so if you couldn't reach uh, like an agreement, we move to the next uh, like a proof of stake uh, proposer. We're actually changing like the leader for every block mm -hmm. to prevent so the would, censorship. So would you switch to next block, or would you just do a view state, view state change? Uh, it's like because hot stuff, it's like view change is relatively cheap. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, it's more like a view change. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just well. So the, the obvious thing for for as one of the miners, I should just DDoS all the other miners so they not be able to send the send the. So basically, yeah, actually, like, uh, like uh, the way we're looking at it is uh, in the future, these will be mostly run by mining pools as well. Mm -hmm. So like mining pools all have like the DDoS uh, yeah, yeah, like sure. mechanism. We also, I mean, because mining pools recently have a lot of uh, things they are looking for as well. For example, there's uh, like uh, there's a hidden uh, block attack that uh, they they. They are really concerned, but they couldn't uh, solve the problem without proto protocol level support. Mm -hmm. We're going to support that to be more friendly to the mining pools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, you can also like, have your own pool mining as well. Yeah. And also, on the proof of stake side, uh, all of the validator will run, will be listening to the uh, POW like, uh, network as well. So basically, they're running like sort of like a full node on a POW space. Yeah, I mean, my, my yeah, just my, my main point is like, let's say, you know, there's a bunch of valid like proof of stake validators. If some of them are inside one pool, like this pool will be preferred mm -hmm. just because they'll get the info faster. Like they produce the block in the first yeah. place. So they'll just propagate. And this is, you said, this is three seconds, right? Yeah. 
So like how lo how long is your like is this one, one minute. minute? Yeah. So what is the propagation time for blocks? Because oh, because everything is empty block. It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's very minimal. Mm -hmm. The propagation time. How does uh, proof of stake validators get rewarded then? Oh, <laughs> so that's uh, like uh, how the two token system works. Mm -hmm. Basically, we have like uh, on chain auctions for the uh, for the governance token. Mm -hmm. So basically, let's say today. Like I have three governance token. The governance token is the proof of stake token, right? Mm -hmm. Like released. So basically, in order to like uh, compete for the three tokens, like uh, people have to bid with the currency token. Let's say I put in like uh, five currency token to the uh, for for like. Competing for this uh, governance token, right? Mm -hmm. So after I win the reward, I mean after I win the governance token, this like uh, basically uh, five currency token belongs to the system now, right? So basically what we do is uh, a portion of them will be distributed to into like a reserve. Let's say this two goes to like a reserve pool, mm -hmm. and then goes back to all the proof of stake validators as a reward, as as block reward. Okay. Gradually release block by block uh, basis, and then uh, a portion of them uh, will be. We we have something called a like a stability fund. Mm -hmm. We put into that fund is also a reserve system, and the rest will be burned. Mm -hmm. So basically, the burning will create uh, like continuous uh, effect on removing currency from circulation. So, but why why would I uh -huh. why, why why would I compete for this? Basically, that's why would uh, I participate in an auction? Basically, that's the governance right mm -hmm. and the record keeping right of the system. So think about like this is the the banking system mm -hmm. of the entire financial system, right? When this basically represents the governance rights in the banking system, and this token can actually extract values from the uh, from the system. For example, from transaction fees, mm -hmm. from like uh, state storage. Uh, and also from, uh, for example, the daily auctions. Oh, okay, so this is this new tokens are generated per epoch. This is like an inflation of. I mean, like stock. this is probably like a, more like a, a day or like a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, for L less for frequent for some period of time. Yeah. So this is like just inflates governance token. Yeah. So all the stakers get inflated by this amount. Right. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then they. They are obligated to to participate in auction. No, you are not obligated to okay. participate. Whoever wants the governance token. Okay, so then yeah. there's like there's no. And this one is basically like a fixed supply curve. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the governance token is the uh, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and the currency token is the energy. It requires the energy that you burned when you mine the Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and we use that as a unit uh, of measurement in the system. All right. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to think what what is the use cases or like as as a one of those validators, what is the, my goals here? Like so, if I have more governance tokens, right? You will be earning more of these fees. I will be earning more fee. Like I'll have more seats in in the hot stuff consensus, or how does it work? Basically, I mean like. Um, so like you have like hundred, let's say yeah, val so validators. Let's say top just, top one hundred staker. Yeah. So. So I am like one of these guys who has more staking. Yeah. Will I get more reward from this more transaction fees from this block? No, if you are not in the 100, yeah. you won't even get transaction fees. But if I I am in 100, like yeah, the more like the uh, more I stake, the more I get, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's proportional to the sum. Basically, what we do is uh, like uh, we because now we have a uh, like a unit of account in the system. Yeah. We actually know uh, how much when you need to have to cover your basis. For example, each validator they need uh, to spend probably like ten thousand dollars per year to maintain their machines, things sure. like that, right? Yeah, they're... So basically, we can say, like, first you will get this ten thousand uh, mm -hmm. a meter, and then like uh, anything above that will be like distributed proportionally. Okay. So you have like some minimal. Yeah. So basically, like to cover your. Your ex basic expense. So wh where is that meter coming from, or it's from like the 
for example, initially, let's say there's very little transactions, right? Yeah. So the transaction fee is sort of uh, let's not say much. zero, yeah. Yeah. Then it's coming from the daily auction. I mean, not daily auction, but time interval of the auction. Like when I sell the governance token. Yeah. So so you sell, let, let's say sell X governance token, right? Yeah. Uh, people bid mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. I'm assuming that only top bid is being taken. No, no, no. Or, this is a. Uh, or is it just pretty much? Basically, like uh, all the bids received on that day get like get the same out. price. Let's say, for example, you have like three governance tokens, right? Mm -hmm. Today you collected uh, five meter tokens. Okay. I see. So each one clears at uh, three over okay. five. Yeah. This is just like. This is like a, like a Dutch auction. Yeah, yeah single price uh, auction. Yeah. Okay. And then okay, so so you collect this uh, meter tokens out of it. Uh -huh. So it's possible that you'll get less. Just because, like right now, people also don't value governance tokens, right? Um, but basically, like uh, because the staking token also like I mean it, maintaining the records, right? Yeah. And also have a fixed supply. So this is more like a store value token in the system. Wait, when you say fixed supply, so the curve of uh, governance token is like this. Yeah. So there'll be less and less. Yeah, you can imagine auction. it's more like. A, like the total reserve will be fixed. Okay. Yeah. So, or you can think about it. This is a small country, right? Yeah. yeah. In order to, like, the country has its own basic currency. In order to like encourage people to immigrate to this country, um, we auction out the parliament seats, mm -hmm. and to like basically create the initial like demand for user, I mean, like for people to want to immigrate. And then, as more and more people immigrate to the country, there will be like more and more business, uh, like running in the country, like uh, the economy will be growing. Then the uh, percentage of the uh, auction of the uh, parliament seats mm -hmm. will become less and less and less important in the system. Well, I mean, is there any other value of governance token except staking? Yeah. So basically, uh, there is also state storage. For example, mm -hmm. in any like. Uh, like a uh, smart contract system, you need to like uh, have a storage space yeah. for the uh, for the states, right? So basically, uh, in order to basically, um, let's say, create a smart contract, you actually need to have some governance token to basically secure that uh, storage. Oh, so do you use rent or do you like lock some of the governance token? Um, basically, we're thinking to more use of, like a rent type mm -hmm. of model. Yeah. Yeah. So then you just need to have some governance token on account and it gets yeah. deducted yeah. over time. Yeah. Anyway. And how how would you value that? Like because that sounds something that I should be paying in meter because Yeah, so basically that uh, is still being worked out. Okay. So like uh, we want to like either for example, you have to maintain enough governance token mm -hmm. or like uh you have to also like uh, sort of bidding on that uh as a for the rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's more like uh, the RAM in EOS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I'm, I'm like the part I'm like trying to figure out, which probably requires a little bit more mm -hmm. involved, um, but like how much? Because like you actually have this like pretty interesting connectivity between meter tokens, meter tokens, governance tokens issuance, like how much new go new meter tokens get issued and. Yeah. Um. Like presumably, so so okay. Let's say, let's work through this example. So meter price is under whatever is this tel ten kilowatt price. Right? Yeah. So because uh, this burning effect yeah. continuously remove uh, things from the system. But uh, like so the question I have is m mostly around like I mean how much of this you you burn right? Like it actually depends on how much the price difference is. It yeah. should depend. So basically, like assuming, for example, right now the price drops, right? Yeah. There's not many people mining, so yeah. the production is like minimal, or yes. like uh, negligible. Yes. And then this thing will keep on removing currency from circulation, so you have certainty that the liquidity like, goes down. Yeah. There's so, but for that, the people need to actually because like if everybody thinks that right, oh, liquidity goes down, meter mm -hmm. token will go up. Mm -hmm. Why would they go bad on governance token instead of holding? Meter oh, token because the price will go up. 
another mechanism in the system. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a stability fund. Yeah. So this is more like the net asset of the uh, of the DAO. Mm -hmm. So basically, when price is high, mm -hmm. you can borrow from that uh, like stability fund. Mm -hmm. And when the price is low, you can basically buy it back, and uh, like uh, and uh, basically like pay back the uh, the loan you borrowed from the uh, from that fund. Mm, who are you in this case? Basically, the governance token holders. Governance token holders. So they, do they use governance token as a collateral or? Yeah, oh. yeah. So basically, you have to lock your governance token yeah. so in order to get that loan. So what's the price for that, or what's the? Uh... Basically, it's Sorry. a parada base. Yeah. No, so let's say I have one governance token. There's a stability fee of you know hundred meter. Yeah. So how much say, can I borrow? Let's say the system have uh, like fifty governance token, like in circulation in total. Okay. So each one will basically uh, represents like two meter you can borrow from the system. I see. Yeah. So the stability fee is pretty much like kind of a back, back reserve of the governance token. Yeah, yeah. And also, this is uh, basically the net asset on the balance sheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the token actually have uh, support in terms of uh, the lowest value. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. But that, so that over time goes down because- and Over time will accumulate because uh, this is just on keep adding like uh, basically funds into the system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this will add funds in the system if right now people, because like, because this, you're exchanging meter token for governance, right? Yeah. Here you're exchanging governance token for meter. Yeah. So, I mean, like, the obvious thing is like buy some governance token, take out some meter, buy more governance token. Yeah, if you want to leverage, you can yeah. do that. But basically here, you need to lock up your governance token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also you lose your opportunity to participate in the, in the record keeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so then going so back. So you will only do this when it will be profitable for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means when the price is high. When the price of? The meter, you can sell it at high. a high price on the market. Yes. All right. And then, uh, so if, if the meter price is low now, uh, you need to return? Otherwise, you will just lose your governance token. And the governance token will be permanent, I mean, just will be cut and locked, removed from circulation, right? Well, why would you lose your governance token? No, basically, it will be locked until basically you pay back the loan. Yeah, no, no, but. So Which you you that, said you said if meter token price is down, right? You this is a good opportunity it. for you to buy it back and pay back the loan, right? Sure. Yeah. But buy back, but buy, why why would no no? But if you think that like mm -hmm. this, the price will go up, right? Why would you do that? Because like sh shouldn't you hold to meter token? Because like the whole point is that no, price basically will like for example. You know the stabilizing. There's a there's certain certain st stabilizing point, yeah. equilibrium point, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, so if you you think you're below right now, yeah, yeah. If you're below right now, it's perfect time for you to buy, because basically, like you know, the system will eventually go back. Sure. Yeah. When it's high, is for you. But that's what, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. so if everybody wants to buy meter token, so uh -huh. nobody wants to buy governance token right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to return governance. Uh, nobody wants to get their loan back. Everybody just gets like holds their meter. Like there's no meter been burned, right? Uh, say it again. So if if meter price is down, yeah, it's down, right? Yeah. Um, so let's assume we have like a bunch of people who have loans in this thing, so they have governance tokens. Yeah. Like they they have meter right now. Yeah they will think that price will go up, right? Yeah, so, so basically, because the, the meter you can borrow only represents a fraction of the value of the governance yeah, yeah. token, right? So unless you want to completely give up your governance token, yeah. which essentially but remove you, you, it from circulation. You're not giving up, you just... Uh... When you lock it, uh, that means it's 
removed from circulation. Right? Sure. Yeah. But you can always buy it back later, right? Yeah. That's so that means uh, eventually, like, you want to buy I mean, really, you're just selling it. That's what happens. You you're selling it to the stability fund, and you can buy it back at the same amount of. Uh, yeah. But you can only basically selling it up to the amount. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the pr the price is like pretty much. Represent to you. Yeah, represent. Yeah. I mean, you pretty much have the price yeah. set. Yeah. Fixed between meter and governance. Uh, no, it's not fixed. Well, it's. I mean, it's whatever. Like so one example, one over total supply, no? Uh, what do you mean by one over total supply? Sorry, the number of meter instability fee. No, no, no. This is just a net asset value, net asset. So let's think about like uh, right. a company, right? Yeah. A company have cash on its balance sheet. Sure. But the value of the company is the net asset value plus the future cash flow, mm -hmm. discounted cash flow yeah, of yeah, the yeah. company, right? So the governance token value is higher than this, like a net asset value. Yeah, but he, but here, you, like I'm, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. this this mechanics sets a price between governance and meter. Because I can sell my governance, get some meter, and I can pay meter and back, get back governance token, right? Uh, say it again. So, so, so you have the stability fund, right? Yeah. So I can take my one gov, right? Yeah. Pay it and get some number of meter token. Yeah, but this is uh, just lock. This is not you're selling it. Yeah, yeah, but I need to return the same number of meter, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. get back one governance. Yeah. I mean, we can consider that. Like if, if nothing else happens with my like if I cannot lose it for any other reason. So let's say for example right now on the uh, on the auction, mm -hmm. this one clears at uh, like uh, let's say six meter. Yeah. Right. The amount you can borrow from the uh, stability fund is let's say like two meter. So okay. why would you give up uh, this value? It's not uh, basically selling it. Yeah. You're yeah, just yeah. collateralizing and it's yeah. over collateralized. So, uh, this is like, a, a, but. Can can anybody else? Nobody else can get my gov, one gov token out of it, right? No, not, okay. only you can yeah, yeah, claim okay. it back. You cannot trade it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you're collateralizing it and getting yeah. getting part of it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. I'll need to think about more. I mean, yeah, two, two, yeah. two token systems are hard because there's like a lot of. But basically, if you think about this, is like, um, for example. If everyone wants to move out of the country, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, just yeah. like any like uh, countries, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. If if nobody cares, the price goes down. That's kind of yeah, regular thing. I mean, the question is, is like you have you have some. So basically, you have some what it does is uh, like this create a Nash equilibrium in the system. Mm -hmm. As long as uh, let's say, for example, if just you and me believe in the system, yeah, then just the exchange between us. Will need to be created. Mm -hmm. um, if there are more people believe in the system, more will be created. Mm -hmm. But if just two of us, only the needed supply will be created. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's on the high level how the system works. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot for uh, explaining. It's really interesting. I think two token systems are always interesting just because there's a lot of more mechanics going on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Check out the uh, what's meter.io. Meter.io, yeah, yeah, for more, for more uh, information. information. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.